Welcome to Art Starts Explores, our province of play. My name is Kay Slater, and I'm the gallery coordinator and preparator at Art Starts in Schools. Every month, we pick a new theme to explore together through art making and play. In these workshops, you can watch along any time you have time to make, or listen, or just watch. We encourage young people, families, and creative people of all ages to join us every week on Saturdays at 11 a.m. as we release a new episode. These videos are for you. Whether you want to join us on Saturday when they become available or any time you want to make. We're so glad you're watching. Have you missed a week? Check out artstarts.com slash explores dash online or any of our videos on YouTube or Facebook to check out an episode you've missed. Okay, let's explore together. Before we begin making, let's review the three rules of explorers. We've got rules in quotes here because they're less rules and more like guidelines or things that we like to have in mind before we start making together. First is respect. We practice respect for ourselves by checking in with ourselves every day before we start making. Maybe we didn't have a good night's sleep or we're feeling really good today. Whatever it is, we want to take the time to check in with ourselves. We also practice respect by doing the same thing for each other. And if we're not making alone, we're making with other grown-ups, or other youth, or friends, or classmates. We want to practice respect by asking them how they're feeling as well, so we can be mindful of each other while we make together. Another way we practice respect is with our tools. That can be about putting them away when we're all finished or using them safely. If somebody else is waiting for a turn to use a tool, we can use our words or our signs and share. We can respect each other by asking how long they'll need the tool so we can move on to something else, or if we need it now, we can let them know when we will be done and tell them we will pass them the tool when we're finished. We can also practice respect by acknowledging the land. So this space that you see here is my studio space. And I'm on the stolen or unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil nations as an uninvited guest on these lands. One of the ways I practice respect is by acknowledging where I'm coming from and to be respectful of the lands, waters, and to the indigenous people who are here and who have been here since time immemorial while I have access to these lands. You can practice respect by finding out the territories and lands where you are watching and making from today and by being the best guest you can and respecting the host nations, the lands, and waterways where you live. The second rule is that nothing is for keeps. I encourage you whenever possible to take things from the recycling bin. You can take paper that's already been drawn on, or has writing on the back, or is ripped, and then you don't have to feel worried about ripping it up yourself, or crumpling it, or just trying something out. It doesn't have to be good or perfect the first time, because it's not for keeps. And when we're all finished, I encourage you to take it apart. That helps really make it so that it isn't for keeps. Because if you know you're gonna take it apart at the end, you don't have to make any finished thing. You can try all the things and ways of making. Our last rule is no expectations. If we're not expecting something to turn out good or even to turn out bad, we're open to it going in a whole bunch of different ways. And that means that all respectful and creative ideas are good regardless of what happens after we try something. If you already know how something is going to turn out, if you've done it before, we can be open to trying something completely new and practice surprise. And if it doesn't turn out, that's okay. It's not for keeps. These are the three rules that we like to keep in mind when we explore together every week. Okay, let's get making together.
Hello everyone and welcome to Art Starts Explores. My name is Kay Slater and I'm the gallery coordinator and preparator at Art Starts in Schools. We're back exploring another week of comics together. And this week I thought what we could explore is time and space in comics. Whether or not you just want to watch me today and get inspired, or if you want to make along, I've gathered the following things so that we can make together. Do you have some paper? I encourage you to grab paper out of the recycling bin. Nothing we're making today is for keeps, so it doesn't matter if there's printing on it, if it's different colors, if there's a stain on it, if it's ripped, Everything that we're making today is just to try it out. And so it really doesn't matter if it's a clean, fresh piece of paper. Do you have a mark making tool? A mark making tool is anything that marks up the page. So I always use markers because it's easier to see um, through my camera, but you could use pencil crayons, crayons, pencils, lipstick, pudding, whatever you have permission to use to mark up your page and see what happens. If you make comics with pudding, I totally want to see them and I hope you let me know. I also put down scissors. If you've made with me before, you know I love to rip paper, so I probably am not going to use my scissors very much today. But if you have permission, if you are working with a grown up or you have some safety scissors that you can use, Grab those because you can use those to cut uh, the paper as we work together. Okay, I'm gonna move some of these things to the side so we have a bit more room to make together. You know who I am. I'm gonna move my little host over to the side. All right, so what do I mean by exploring time and space in comics? Now I don't mean like space with stars and planets and spaceships. Although if you wanna make your, uh, your comic today themed in space, you absolutely can. When I'm talking about space, I'm talking about actual area, about the space between characters, the space between story items, the space between dialogue and text and speech. When we are looking at the space between things, we're actually saying more things by pausing. It's the same in music. If you think about music, if you were to play the same note all the time, or even just different notes without resting, you'd not only get exhausted and probably pass out, but you wouldn't have any breaks. You wouldn't have any pauses to appreciate the music that came before or to anticipate or get excited for music that was about to come. So rests or pauses in music are just as important as rests and pauses or space when we're making visual art. Let's explore what I mean. I'm gonna take my piece of paper and you know what? I will use my scissors along with you to begin with. Let's cut our piece of paper in half. So before we even add anything to our page, we've gone from one moment in time. So if I was to draw something here, it would be one moment in time. It would be one picture. As if you took a camera and you took a picture of people playing in a, in a park, throwing a Frisbee. It would be that moment that would be captured in this frame, in this comic frame in this picture that you drew. By cutting it in half, even if it was the same picture where it was a big park where somebody's throwing a Frisbee, you would have to separate your attention into two different moments, here and here. And because we read left to right in English and top to bottom, we would look and see this panel or this page first, 
and then this panel or this page second. It would be different if we were reading something that wasn't in English. For example, if you're going to read comics in Japanese or Korean, you're going to read it um, uh, right to left, still top to bottom. So whether you're reading uh, manga or manhwa, you're going to be reading from um, right to left, top to bottom. But today, I'm going to be practicing in English. So I'm going to be going from left to right, top to bottom. So do you see what I'm talking about, about space um, and time? This is a moment in time. And by creating space between these two moments, I've created two moments. What happens if we put more space between them? What does it feel like? It feels like they're more separated. It feels like, again, even if we had the same picture that we cut in half, that this moment, because I read from left to right, happens way before this moment that happens to the right. The pause is longer. There's more space, there's more distance your eye has to travel when it goes from this page all the way over to this page. It's quite easy if it's here. It's almost like a breath or a hiccup from here to here. Your eyes don't have to do much work to go from this page to this page. But the eyes definitely have to do more work. And if anything, because there's this space here, if this was a really complex or complicated drawing that had lots of detail, you'd probably spend more time looking on this page before you hopped over to this page. Whereas if they were right beside each other, you'd probably be able to read it or look at it all as one picture. The pause would be less. And so that's what I mean about um, time and space. Let's explore this. Let's start actually putting some drawings on here and see what happens. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a I'm going to draw a turtle character. You might recognize this kind of character. There we go. So there's my funny fast drawing of a turtle character. And so this turtle character is thinking about, what are they thinking about? They're thinking about using, or sorry, they're thinking about the fact that they're hungry. And so they're gonna think about a milkshake They're gonna think about a bowl of pasta or noodles. They're gonna think about, I mean, obviously if they're turtles, everybody knows that turtles love pizza. One more food, what are they gonna think about? Maybe, maybe today they're thinking about apples. Who knows? There you go. So they're thinking about food. So I put a whole bunch of food there. So in this moment, all this page, they're thinking about, oh, you know what? They need a belt. There we go. There we go. Because turtles need belts. Um, so this, this character is thinking about food. And in this moment, they're thinking about nothing else but food. And we can't think about anything else but this character thinking about food. Now, if we were to draw that same character over here,
we go. So the same character is thinking about food, but now what we're gonna do is we're going to go dot, 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 and then we're gonna have the bubble over here. And again, we'll put our pizza, we'll put our apple, we'll put our milkshake, and we'll put our bowl of pasta or noodles. It doesn't have to be pasta. And there we go, there's my spoon there. So there we go. So now, do you see? I mean, it's a little bit different because I made it, I made the, the thought bubble really, um, really big, but it's one moment, right? We're just thinking about um, this turtle character, thinking about the food. Well, what happens now? We put a little bit of a break. If we just look at this picture before we even look over here, we get to go, oh, I wonder what they're thinking about. Before we even look over here, if we focus, and if we were to push it even further apart, right? What we wonder, we have a moment to actually go, I wonder what they're thinking about before we get the answer. Then when we finish going, okay, they're thinking, oh, they're thinking about all these things. And now we can focus on each one of these drawings. Oh, they're thinking about pizza and apples and milkshakes and noodles. This one is like, they're thinking about food, right? It's this character is thinking about food. It's all one picture. Whereas this is, this character is thinking, pause, about all these different kinds of food. This could mean that they're really hungry. This could mean that they want to eat specifically these foods. Um, so by changing the space between them, we kind of change the story or how it's read. Let's keep going. What if we were to take this picture now and we were to make space between these panels. There we go. So how does this read? What changes? Now I'm reading this character's thinking, but they're thinking about maybe pizza versus apples. So healthy, sorry, unhealthy versus healthy. And maybe they're, they're, um, um, they're conflicted. They, they're not sure what they should do. By splitting this up, I'm now thinking and reading these two foods by themselves and not all together like foods, like they're hungry. Now it's this one and this one only, pizza versus apples. And then down here, maybe it's drinks versus solid foods, or maybe something sweet versus something salty. And so by splitting them up and isolating them, I can really focus on each thing. What if I was to change the spacing this way? Does it change anything? What if I was to overlap this one down here and put this one up here? What happens? It feels like they want to be connected but they're not connected. So my brain goes, well, why are they not connected? Is it because they kind of want this one? They, they know that they want this, but they're not really sure if they want pizza or apple to be the third thing that they eat? Or is this the thing that they really want, but they know they should eat this? And depending on the story that you are starting to create or the personality that you have assigned to this turtle character, then that's going to um, that that's going to uh, influence the story. Let's do it one more time. Actually, let's do it two more times. There we go. So now we've put space in between each one of these. We still have the turtle character thinking about all of these different foods. But now it's, um, it's or, right? Because of all the space, it's pizza or apples or noodles 
or milkshakes. And there's a bit more time between each one. So maybe instead of uh, the turtle character thinking of all of these foods all together at once, they're just, they're really hungry and they could have any kind of food. And maybe they're not even hungry for any of these things. They're just hungry for food. And it was the top things that they thought of, the icons they thought of when they thought of food. This all of a sudden really emphasizes or puts, um, or, or makes it really clear that they're thinking about each one of these different foods individually. We're, we're spending time with this turtle's thoughts that they do want pizza, or maybe they do want apples, or do they actually want milkshakes? Or maybe it's noodles, and, and you really get a sense that they're conflicted. What if we were to actually tilt them, where you use this space and create some chaos? So now it's not these straight lines, but the, the spaces between are actually erratic and all over the place. So now we're giving this sense that there's some tension. The character really doesn't know which one they want, and they're kind of stressed out about it. And so by taking one simple drawing and cutting it into pieces and playing with the spaces, we can change the storytelling. Okay, let's do one more. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna play with time a little bit. So this character's thinking. I'm gonna keep the spaces like this, but maybe they're not super stressed out about it. So they're not really sure. What are, what are they going to do? So now I'm going to draw my turtle character again. And I'm gonna maybe make a not sure face, so a sad face over here because they're, they're, they're really not sure what they're gonna do. Make sure I put my cool belt here. There we go. And so I'm just going to leave the panel like this. What do you notice? But do you notice by just having the picture like this with these frames up here? The way that I read it is, is that this character is quickly and kind of actively thinking about all these things in this moment and kind of this short moment because we've only got a small space to be thinking or to be paying attention to them. And that they're quickly thinking about these different kinds of foods. But when I get down to this panel, all of this empty space here, and not just this empty space, but the whole page makes me spend more time here. If you were just to think about the amount of seconds it takes for your eyes to look at every, sec every piece of this page, so maybe one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And don't forget the spaces in between probably take one. But then this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It takes more time to take it in. Even though this is empty, your eyes still are looking all around the page for information. And the information that you're getting is that this character really doesn't know. It can't, um, it can't decide, or um, they can't decide which food they want to have, and they're kind of disappointed, or they're sad, or they're just hungry, or they're grumpy for all this time over here. But if we were to add, I did have to rip at least one page. I I, uh, I don't want to explore ever once without getting to uh, to rip one page. So what if I use this space, so I still wanna have it be all of this time, but I want this extra moment. 
And I'm gonna put a, I'm gonna put a box around it. Cause even though I ripped it, I want this moment of time to be the one that we're going to be in. And I'm going to, I'm gonna draw my turtle character again. And this time they're talking. They're happy and they're talking on the telephone. And they've got an old telephone. They don't have a cell phone. Here we go. So they're they're thinking, they're kind of frustrated for a really for a really long time and then they make the decision to call to call somebody. And then let's draw one last one last frame. And I wonder if I can fit this in here. I'm going to move some things over so I got a bit more room. Excuse me, host character. We'll move our exploring time and space over here. We call somebody and then we flip the page. And then what happens? You know what? I'm going to take two pages here so that it looks like it's the same amount of space. There we go. So as if it's a comic book. And we had this page over here and then we flipped over and we had this page over here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to have one big moment of time that takes up the amount of time that all of this took, which was the uh, pizza was delivered because we know that turtles need to have uh, pizzas. And one slice is out of it. There we go. And then we have our turtle uh, character mouth open. Happy about to eat a kind of sloppy piece, a sloppy cheesy piece of pizza. There we go. And I'm gonna put hearts around them because they made the right decision. Here, I'm gonna put some pepperoni because they should have pepperoni. And then the crust on the pizza. There we go. So do you see this this picture I drew really, really big to show that it was the biggest decision. It was the thing we spent the most time with. It's the it's the end. Um, it's this uh, they're satisfied. They thought through all of these different things. They called and then this was the result. So this is the big ending that I want you to spend more time with. I was able to put more detail in here because it was bigger. Right, these ones were kind of scribbled really quick. This one was especially really quick and scribbled, but this one here was uh, was done um, really big, so you would pay attention to it. So that's what I'm talking about when I'm saying I'm exploring space and time, or time and space, is that the amount of time that we spend with each one is really affected by the size of the comic that we make and the space that we leave between or even in a panel. If I had gone like this and just left there and brought this up here, what changes? So if this is page one over here, there you go, move these over so there's a bit more space between them. There you go. What happens? What's different? This one, it feels like they're conflicted or frustrated or thinking for even longer before they make the fast decision because now it's this tiny part of this big section over here. They made the fast decision to call and then the pizza comes and they made the right decision. So just by even changing where it's located, it can change the story a bit. This is just one way that you can explore time and space. And I used pictures um, that I drew myself but you could take, if you had um, an old comic book that you were going to throw out and you had permission, um, or maybe the, 
the uh, newspaper that had comics in it that were going to be going out into the recycling bin, you could cut them out and you could move the different comic um, pieces to see what happens and how the story changes when you have different spaces between them. Make sure you have permission before you cut up any comic books because a lot of people will collect and they're, and they're important to them. But if you have permission, or if you're taking something out of the recycling bin, or you drew it yourself, you can cut it up and see what happens when you put space in between each of your panels. Thanks so much for exploring with me today. I had a lot of fun. We're going to be exploring more comics this month, so make sure you check out our website at artstarts.com slash explores dash online, or our Facebook page, or our YouTube page. You can check out this episode and all of our previous episodes anytime online. We always release a new episode on Saturdays at 11 a.m. So I hope to see you again soon for a future episode exploring comics. Thanks so much. I'm going to take a moment like I always do at the end of all of my workshops and clean up because that's the way that we show respect to our space. And um, I hope you do the same thing wherever you are making today. All right, see you soon. Bye.